Hi everyone, welcome back. So I have uh, actually another entry into the Blue Note 1500 project. I, I ended up getting a record to fill one of the gaps. So I wanted to uh, post it up here. I had a chance to uh, sit down and really listen to this, which was a lot of fun. It's, it's definitely one of those ones that uh, is not as uh, easy to find as some of the other ones. And, and a lot of that has to do with, and here's the cover by the way, it's Blue Note 1565, and it's just called Clifford Jordan. There's not really a, a title to it, um, 15, six, uh, 1565 there. Um, and there's very little pressings of this, and I think that that's why this record is definitely one of the harder ones to find in, in the 1500 series. Um, there's original pressings, obviously. This one is a second pressing, so it's one of those United Artists monos, uh, which is like from 72, I think. And then there's just, uh, there's an, I think a Japanese pressing from 84. And then I think a Japanese pressing from 91. And then a Scorpio pressing, like those early 2000 Scorpio pressings uh, that Blue Note did. And so that that's really it. So there's about five vinyl presses uh, that exist of this album and that's really about it so it's definitely one of those ones that's a little harder to find so you don't hear about it too much uh, but it's a very very good album and uh, it's got a really good lineup on it it's lee morgan curtis fuller john jenkins playing alto clifford jordan playing tenor ray bryant on piano paul chambers on bass and art taylor on drums it's got just five tracks on it the first side is really stretched out. There's only two tracks. It's Not Guilty and St. John. And both of those tracks really stretch out. I mean, they take up literally half half of the vinyl on each side. And uh, they really are um, very long tracks to allow for a lot, of, a lot of interplay and a lot of soloing. And then side two has three tracks on it, Blue Shoes and Beyond the Blue Horizon which are, are, again, long tracks. And then there's a very short track, which is Juba, which ends the album. And um, the song that definitely, like, the album is very interesting, the way that it's molded. Side one is more of a mid-tempo songs, and they are definitely uh, less intense in the playing. And then side two it's almost like a different session in a way. They're very fiery tracks. Uh, Lee Morgan's really on fire on both of those uh, long tracks on that album, on, on side two, even on the last track too. Like it's, they, it's a very contrasted album. Side one is more laid back. Side two is very fiery. And so uh, Not Guilty track one, as I said, it's a very long track. It's a mid-tempo song. Everybody gets a chance to solo pretty much on this except Art Taylor because the track is just so long. Ray Bryant throughout this whole album is fantastic. If you're unfamiliar with who Ray Bryant is, he was a great, great piano player. Played on a lot of prestige sessions. Uh, had a couple uh, albums, I believe, that came out on the New Jazz imprint, which was one of the uh, prestige subsidiaries. Great piano player. Um, he really is shines on this entire album very very good piano player um his piano solo on the first track which is uh not guilty is great just really really good it's a very cool cover too it is not a reed miles cover by the way um it's a it's by tommy hannon which i believe uh tommy hannon also did 1564 which is a, a paul chambers quintet and uh one or two other ones that kind of have the same abstract the art design to them but this is actually a um francis wolf photo uh, of clifford jordan so then uh track two which is saint john really the there's a the head on that song is really cool the person who really shines on that song is curtis fuller he does this great slide like these really really cool slide lines with the trombone obviously because the trombone could slide um, really, really cool lines that he does on that. And then Lee Morgan takes some really good lines on that song, too. You flip it over to side two. As I said, side two really is very fiery. Uh, and it starts with Blue Shoes. That track has a really, really cool intro on it. 
and then there's this really cool muted riff that Lee Morgan does on it, and then there's this really cool like back-to-back -back sax solos and they actually kind of talk to each other a little bit on it as well like throughout it there they they definitely like you could hear them talking to each other you know meaning like they're playing off of each other and one will play a phrase then the next will play a phrase it's very cool and then uh, beyond the blue horizon is the fourth track on this and the piano intro on that is really really cool the trumpet solo on that is really, it, that's the highlight of that song. To me, that's the highlight of this album, truthfully. That solo by Lee Morgan on Beyond the Blue Horizon is absolutely outstanding. It's Lee Morgan at his best. It's just so, so good. And Ray Bryan takes a really good solo on that, on that track, too. And then the last track is Juba, and it's a really cool intro with Lee Morgan and outro with Lee Morgan and Art Taylor. Um, Art Taylor actually takes a solo on Beyond the Blue Horizon as well. Um, there's like a trading four sections at the end of it, which is very cool. And then Lee Morgan really shines on Juba. And it's a very short track. I think it was only maybe like three minutes. And uh, just it's very, very uh, interesting way to end the album. Like a lot of albums t sometimes end on a lower, like a low, a more slower mid-tempo, low track song and uh you know low tempo song this is not like this is a very fiery song for a couple minutes and it's, so it's a very interesting way to end this album and it's it's one of those albums that's definitely unique within blue note meaning like it wasn't really reissued much analog productions didn't do this music matters didn't do this one and i feel like for the most part a lot of blue notes especially in the 1500 series outside of like the like, really huge ones like Blue Train and Lee Morgan Cooker and Cool Strutton. Like, for the most part, a lot of the 1500 series titles were dependent, like, nowadays on how popular they are. I feel like we're very dependent on if they, how, when was the last reissue? And was the reissue done by Music Matters or Analog Productions where there was a ton of hype or a tone poet? where there's a ton of marketing on this, even a Blue Note Classic now, where there's tons of marketing on it. Because, you know, early 2000s when those Scorpio pressings came out, there was very little marketing at that point. Vinyl didn't hit a resurgence. Records weren't really selling like they sell now. So a lot of these 1500 titles like this one, a lot of people don't know about because of the fact that there, there's not really a lot of marketing on them. There's no hype on them. People aren't talking about them in new reissues like they are with all the ones that came out on Music Matters and all the ones that are on Analog Productions and Tone Poets. So um, check this one out online. It's a very, very good album. Um, Clifford Jordan was a great player and a very interesting player in the sense of his progression through the music. He, you know, has some albums that necessarily you don't know of Clifford Jordan per se, you know, right off the bat, but he's got this one, he's got Cliffcraft, and, you know, arguably one of his most iconic and favorite albums is Clifford Jordan, um, In the World, it's on Strata East, great, great title, amazing album, and if you're unfamiliar with that album, actually, let me pull it out, I do have that album, and it is just, it's one of those outstanding albums that doesn't get, um, very hard to find. I don't know how many reissues have come out of this album. Outstanding album. I know this sidetracked a little from a um, Blue Note, but I just think it's worth talking about Clifford Jordan. He's an outstanding player. Obviously, Cliff Craft was done. I think um, it's 1582, and Andy and Next Play did that, and that's Strata East label, by the way. Um, just outstanding, uh, outstanding jazz label if you're unfamiliar with Strata East. And really, if you're unfamiliar with this album, go look it up online. It's an outstanding Clifford Jordan album, as well as this is a very good Clifford Jordan album. And so, you know, just it's worth talking about Clifford Jordan a little bit. He doesn't get talked about as much as he should. So I, just, I wanted to just kind of end this video with a little, um, little brief snippet of Clifford Jordan and a couple of his records and how good they are. There's a lot of good Clifford Jordan albums out there. So this is Blue Note 1565, Clifford Jordan, um, self-titled album, 
and a uh, very cool picture of Clifford Jordan there as well. So uh, check it out online if you haven't heard this one. Well worth the time and effort. So thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed, and I will talk to you guys next time.